Okay, we're going to look at the constant acceleration formula, and this is for GCSE for Lermans. So first of all, we're going to look at constant velocity. So if a body moves at a constant velocity, so it's not accelerating, we can say then displacement is equal to velocity times time. So just, it's a bit like your distance is equal to speed times time. Displacement, the vector one, is equal to velocity, which is a vector version of speed, times time. Okay, so if we then uh, have look at a couple examples just on this. So we have an object travels at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. How far has it traveled after uh, 6 seconds? So if we, oh, sorry, if we just, uh, it's not working. If we just look at this one, we have S is equal to VT. So S in this case is equal to my velocity, which is 5 times 6. So my S is equal to 30 and give the units meters and that's it. Next example says a body travels 1.5 kilometers in the same direction within uh, 18 seconds. Find the velocity of the body. First thing I'm going to do is convert my 1.5 kilometers into meters. So that's going to be 1,500 meters. And then I'll just write down my formula, which was S is equal to VT, which means uh, find the velocity. V is equal to S over T. So V in this case is going to be 1,500 divided by 18. And if I do 1,500 divided by 18, I'll get 187.5 meters per second. Okay, we're going to look at our, our formulas. In situations involving constant, and another word for constant is uniform acceleration, then we can use a constant acceleration formulas. So you've got these four are given to you in your formula booklet. So this is V is equal to U plus AT. Let's just explain what these letters stand for. U is the initial velocity. V is the final velocity. A is the constant acceleration. T is the time taken. And S, like you'll see in the, the next three equations, S is the displacement. So we've got these uh, four formulas. <coughs> they may be in your formula booklet, but you really do need to learn these and know these formulas plus one other one, which is very useful too. So V, your final velocity equals your initial velocity plus your acceleration times time. S, your displacement, is your initial velocity times your time plus a half times your acceleration times your T squared. And also V squared, your final velocity squared equals your initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the displacement. And the last one, S is equal to a half U plus V T. Okay, I'm not going to look at these all. I'm just going to look at this last one and explain why this, uh, how this works. Okay, if you imagine we've got the velocity time graph going on here, and my initial velocity was u, so that was u here. My final velocity is v, so this is v, and the time that it's been going for is t. Now, if you remember back in your notes on velocity time graphs, we said that the distance is found by the area onto the graph. So I'm going to call, call that distance s, and you'll see why, because s is equal to, that is a trapezium. So half times the sum of the parallel sides times the perpendicular distance between them. And there you can see this is where this one comes from as well. Okay. Uh, if we'll, we'll, I will just look at this first one as well. So if you imagine you've got your uh, initial velocity here is u. And you've got for a certain length of time, your acceleration is a. So that means every second it goes up by a meters per your speed. Your velocity goes up by a meters per second squared. So in t seconds, it's going to be a times t. So your final velocity is going to be u plus the gradient there, and the wee difference is going to be a t. So u plus a t. Okay. One more formula which is very useful is this one here. So this one is very similar to your second one. So it's very similar to this one. Uh, this one what was S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. This one, which isn't given to you, but it is very useful. S is equal to VT minus a half AT squared. Okay, when we're, uh, we'll go look at a few examples how we actually use these formulas uh, in the questions. Okay, this, this example says a body accelerates uniformly from 4 meters per second to 15 meters per second over 4.5 seconds. Right, a good thing to do here in these questions is just to write down what you have been given. So it starts uh, at 4 meters per second. 
So my u is equal to 4, my speed is equal to 4, my initial velocity sorry, is equal to 4, my final velocity is 15, and it takes me uh, 4.5 seconds to do that. Okay, let's just flick back and look at our formulas for um, our constant acceleration. And we have got uh, v, sorry, u, v, t, and we want to find a. So you look back, there's those four things. You look back at which equation involves those, and the equation which involves those four things is going to be the first one, v equals u plus a, t. So that's how you, you know which one, uh, which equation you're going to be looking for. So uh, just write down your equation, v is equal to, v is equal to u plus a, t. And then just fill it in, 15 is equal to 4 plus 4.5 times a. Bring the 4 across and subtract, you'll have 11 is equal to 4.5 times your a. And then you're going to have just your a is equal to 11 divided by 4.5, which means your a works out to be 2. I've given us a fraction mixed number, 2 and 4 ninths, and that is going to be... Uh, sorry, meters per second squared. Okay, next question says, a car travels 150 meters in 20 seconds. It started with an initial velocity of 10, find its final velocity. So let's write down what we have. S is equal to 150, T is equal to 20, uh, U is equal to 10, and what we want to find is your V. So you're going to use S is equal to a half U plus V times t. So how I've got that, I've gone back, looked at your formulas and see which formula involves those four things on the left hand side. Then fill in what you know, 150 is equal to a half times my u which is 10, my v I don't know so just write v and my t is 20. Tidy it up again, a half times the 20 just becomes 10 and that's what you've got and then you can solve this lots of ways. What I'm actually going to do is divide across by the 10 to give me 150 divided by 10 is equal to 10 plus v, which means 15 is equal to 10 plus v. We've got it working out v is equal to 5 meters per second, and that's us done. Okay, this is in a, a deceleration question. It says a body slows from 5 meters per second, so my u, 15, sorry, meters per second, u is equal to 15, to 2, so that's my final velocity, over a distance of 32. And it says find the deceleration. You find the deceleration by just finding a, and then you maybe have to change the sign at the end. We'll see. So formula you're going to use is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Fill in what you know. Uh, 2 squared is equal to 15 squared plus 2 times my a times my s. So 2 times my a times my s, which is 32. And then just tidy it all up. That's going to be... 4 is equal to 15 squared, going to be 225, and then plus going to be plus 64a. Bring the 225 across, you'll have minus 221 is equal to 64a. Your acceleration then is equal to uh, minus 221 over 64, so your acceleration is minus 3 and 29 over 64. Uh, so that's my acceleration what it says up above here is deceleration is negative acceleration so we just say her the deceleration is 3 and 29 over oh sorry over 64 meters per second squared okay an object de decelerates to rest over over uh, 6.2 seconds so Let's just write down what we've got so far. I know my time is 6.2 seconds. So when I'm putting the units in here, my decelerate, my deceleration is 1.4. That means my excel acceleration is minus 1.4 meters per second squared. And it says find the initial velocity. So we want to find u. Uh, so, yeah, we want to find our u. Right, read the question again. We've only got three things. We haven't got enough information here to do this question. Three things is not enough for us to find uh, a missing uh, variable. So here, read it again and see what we're missing. So it says, an object decelerates to rest. So if something comes to rest, that means it starts with a velocity uh, and then it slows down and comes to rest. So when you come to rest, that means the final velocity is equal to zero 
meters per second. So it's very easy for people to miss that one. So, uh, so write down the formula that's going to be involved. So it's just going to be the, the easy one. V is equal to U plus AT. Just fill in what you know. Zero is equal to my U. And that's going to be minus 1.4 times my T, which is 6.2. Which means, and that's going to be 8.68 is equal to U. And it says, find the initial velocity. That's our answer then. So U is equal to 8.68 meters per second. Okay, this example says, a train passes a point A, traveling at 45 kilometers per hour. Uh, the train passes a point 30 minutes later, traveling at 55 kilometers per hour. And it says, given that the train accelerates uniformly between A and B, calculate the acceleration of the train between A and B in kilometers per hour squared. So, first of all, we'll just write down what we've got. Our, it's, it's traveling at 45 kilometers per hour. And we'll put the units in here because it could be a wee, confuse, wee bit confusing. And the train passes point B 30 minutes later. So my time. And make sure the units are consistent. So if my velocity is in kilometers per hour, my time has to be in hours. So it's 30 minutes later, which is 0.5 hours. And my acceleration, what else do we know? Sorry, we know our V. Um, it's traveling now at 55 kilometers per hour. And what we want to find is your A. So to find your A, we'll just write down the formula V is equal to U plus AT. Fill in what you know. 55 is equal to 45 uh, plus 0.5A, which means 10 is equal to 0.5A, which means A works out to be 20 kilometers per hour squared. Part two of this question says calculate the distance from A to B. Uh, so we've got nothing has changed in this first part, so we'll just jump to it and we'll just say my distance is equal to a half u plus v times t. So notice I haven't used my acceleration that I worked out. I used my I found my s because I already had my u. I used this formula sorry because I had my u, t, and v already. This was just in case I messed this up. That means I'm if I'm not using my a that I've used in part one. So sometimes you're able to do this. Sometimes you have to use whatever you've worked out in part one. Uh, but it's going to be it's going to work out the same anyway as long as you've done it correctly. So it's going to be a half. My U was 45. My V was 55. My T was 0.5. And then if you do that, it's going to be a half times 100 times a half again, which is going to be just 25 kilometers. Okay, before the next two parts of the question, the situation changes a little bit. It says, at the instant the train passes B, it starts to de decelerate uniformly. It comes to rest over a distance of 11 kilometers. It says, calculate the deceleration of the train in kilometers per hour squared. So for part three, um, it's, first of all, it's initial velocity. So it's velocity at B was the final velocity up here. So this was a velocity when we got to B. So that's still your velocity when you start off at B now. So it was 55 uh, kilometers per hour I should have had in there. And it comes to rest. So if it comes to rest, that means V is equal to zero kilometers per hour. And what else do we know? It takes 11 kilometers to do this. And what we're looking for is your acceleration A. So that's what we're looking for. So in this case, you're going to use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS, which means zero is equal to 55 squared plus two times my 11 times my A. And work on with that. If you bring the 55 squared across, you're going to have get minus 3025 is equal to 22A. We better work on out A works out to be minus 137.5. And it's going to be kilometers per hour, isn't it? Kilometers per hour squared. And that was my acceleration. And you would lose a mark if you didn't do that last bit. So therefore your or sorry, deceleration is 137.5 kilometers per hour squared. Okay, last part of the question says, find the time taken for the train to come to rest after passing B, giving your answer in minutes. So again, last bit, my V was equal to zero, and that was kilometers per hour. My U was equal to 55 kilometers per hour. 
Um, my acceleration I will use, I'm just going to check that acceleration that was a nice, was a nice number here. Uh, what was that? Sorry, one minus, minus 3025 divided by 22. Yep, it was, it was bang on 137.5. So we can use that. I thought I'd maybe rounded it, but my acceleration was minus 137.5 kilometers per hour squared and I'm going to find my t, the time it takes me. So again you're going to use v is equal to u plus at, fill in what you know, 0 is equal to 55 minus 137.5 times t. So that means 137.5 t is equal to 55 which means t is equal to 55 divided by 137.5 which is 0.4 hours. Now go back and read the question. They wanted your time in minutes. So to get convert into minutes you need to multiply by 60 and if you do that you're going to get 24 minutes and that's it. Okay that's our first video on constant acceleration uh, finished and there'll be questions for you to do.